Okay, so what you see here is a truth tree, a simple truth tree for an argument in classical propositional logic. Uh, truth tree is, uh, of course, one of the methods for testing the validity of an argument. Um, and these things are really very simple. Uh, once you get the hang of them, they're probably the easiest method for testing validity. Um, let me say that this video isn't for beginners. Uh, this is for people who are somewhat familiar with propositional logic, but who haven't used truth trees before. Um, so I'm going to breeze through this quite quickly. Um, I might upload some more basic videos, but that's not what this is. Uh, right, so first of all, we need to define some inference rules, and these should all be completely familiar. Um, so these are our truth functions. We have, you know, negation, conditional, biconditional, conjunction, disjunction. Uh, let's have a look at some rules. Uh, double negation. You see, not not a. You infer a. No surprises there. Conjunction. Obviously, uh, the conjunction of a and b is true only if both a and b are true. So from from conjunction, we can infer a and b. Uh, negated conjunction. Right, um, well, not uh, a, a and B is false, just in case uh, either A is false or B is false. We don't know whether it's A that's false or whether it's B that's false. It might be both. Uh, we don't know, but one of them is false. Now, obviously, we can't derive both not A and not B because one of them might be true. So what we do is we split our tree and we create two separate branches. Um, on one branch we assume not A, on the other branch we assume not B. And these branches are now independent. So if you see a negated conjunction, that's what you do. You split the tree, have two branches. Disjunction. Uh, a or B, well that's true if either A is true or B is true. Uh, they might both be true, or one of them might be false, we don't know. So again we create two branches. On one we assume that A is true, the other we assume B is true. Negated disjunction. Well obviously if a, dis if a disjunction is false then um, neither of the disjuncts is true. So we can derive immediately both not A and not B. Conditional. Uh, well, recall the truth table for the material conditional. The conditional is true if either the antecedent is false or if the consequent is true. False antecedent, true consequent. We split the branch. Uh, not A on one side, B on the other. A negated conditional. Well, obviously the only time a conditional is false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So uh, if, if we see not if A then B, then we can derive both A and not B. Uh, biconditional. Um, the biconditional tells us that both A and B have the same truth value. We don't know what the truth value is, but we know that either they're both true or they're both false. So we need to split our tree. On, on one side we assume they're both true and on the other we assume they're both false. Negated, negated biconditional. Um, well, in this case, we know that A and B have different truth values. Uh, again, we don't know which is which, but we know they're both different. So we, we create two branches. On one we have A and not B, the other we have not B and A. Right, um, those, that's it. Those are the inference rules for truth trees in classical propositional logic. Um, and uh, I'd suggest writing them down, but that's 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 pretty much all we need to to do our truth trees. And uh, I hope that that's that's made some sense. Uh, as I say, it should be all completely completely familiar. Okay, so how do we actually construct a truth tree? What does a truth tree look like? Well, to demonstrate, let's take a simple argument. If p then q, p therefore q modus ponens. We're going to test the validity of this argument and I, I don't expect we'll have many surprises here. Um, first of all we list the premises. So we list if p then q and then we list p. Um, then we list the negation of the conclusion, not q. 
So we've got the premises and the negation of the conclusion of our original argument. Uh, and, and now it's time to apply our rules. Um, as you can see, we don't really have many options here. There's, there's only one rule we can apply, and that's the conditional to the first premise. Uh, so we need two branches. On one we assume not P, and on the other we assume Q. Uh, there we go. And as I say, that's about all we can do, because there's no more rules. And uh, now notice, notice the tree itself. Um, we've got not P here, which contradicts P up here. So we have to close that branch. That's called the up tack, which is just the, uh, the, the logical symbol for contradiction, if you haven't seen it before. Um, and yeah, the, the, since we've derived a contradiction, that branch is closed. There's nothing more we can, we can do there. Uh, on the other side, of course, the case is the same. We've got Q and not Q, which is a contradiction. And so now the whole tree is closed because we have no more branches. On, on all the branches we've got, we've got a contradiction. So the tree is closed. It's finished. So the idea is that you keep deriving rules until you keep applying rules until you derive a contradiction. Um, uh, and it's very important to point out at this point that the the branches only close when you derive contradictories on the same branch. Uh, if you had P on the left here, and then not P on the right, that wouldn't cause either of the branches to be closed. Um, it's best to think of each branch as being independent. When you when you look for a contradiction, you, you only look upwards. You go up the branch. So you've got not P here, P up here, so our branch closes. So our tree, this tree, is now complete. Uh, there are two conditions under which a tree is complete. Either every branch has been closed, or we've applied every possible rule. In our case, it's both. Um, so uh, what this means is our tree is closed, every branch is closed, and what that means is that our, our original set of premises here is inconsistent. Remember, we, we assumed um, the negation of the conclusion, and we derived a contradiction no matter how we interpreted the formulas. So our original argument up here, if P then Q, P therefore Q, that must be valid. As I say, um, no surprises there. So we have a very, very simple method for testing validity. We assume the negation of the conclusion and we try to derive a contradiction on every branch. If you derive a contradiction on every branch, then the argument is valid. A very simple method. Well, uh, hopefully you have an intuitive sense of what's going on now, uh, but let's take a look at a somewhat more complex argument. Um, let's take the argument I had on the first slide. Um, P or Q, if and only if, not, not P and not Q. This is an argument without any premises. It's uh, a logical truth, tautology. You uh, should recognise it, actually, as one of de Morgan's laws. So we start by assuming its negation. Um, the main operator here is the biconditional. Recall the rules for the negated biconditional. We need two branches, one with A and not B, the other with not A and B, which corresponds to uh, P or Q and not 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 P and not Q on one side, and well, you can see the other. Um, okay, now I'm going to put a little star next to my first formula after applying that rule. It's a good idea to star formulas you've already used. Um, I'm not going to bother with the stars again after doing this example because, you know, it's I'm doing this in PowerPoint and it just takes ages to put stars near everything. Uh, but for yourself, when you when you do your own truth trees, it's well worth using stars because it lets you keep track of, um, you know, what what arguments you've done, what um, what formulas you've you've applied rules to. Okay, so let's focus on the left branch here. 